Okay, let's get started. This is module one. Today, I have one goal in mind, just one. I want to install and instill in you the entrepreneur's mindset. I want to take you from wherever you are right now mentally to a different place, to a different mental model, a different paradigm, a different way of thinking about yourself and about this vast world around you in Japan and the rest of the world. I want to show you and I want to teach you how to think, act, and transact business like an entrepreneur because I'm going to transform you in the rest of the modules into a successful entrepreneur. So let's start with the entrepreneur's mindset. It is different. It is more animated, more excited, more passionate, and more possibility-oriented than that of the employee. The entrepreneur's mindset starts with a burning desire to create something, to create something of value, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, whether it's a business, no matter what the field, it's the ability to look at an industry and see a gap, to see a hole, to see a weakness that can be filled by you more purposely, more advantageously, more beneficially than the people doing it now. Or it's your ability to learn to see opportunities that aren't being successfully met. Or it's your ability to see areas and ways that you can help people in other businesses be more successful, more productive, uh, more profitable, more effective, less stressful. It's the ability to understand the concept of value creation. So let me explain. Most people don't even know this, but in our lives and in business, we are rewarded and we are successful in direct proportion to the problems we solve for others, the quantity of problems, the quality of problems, the significance of problems, and or the opportunities we create for others. Interestingly, just like you may have started out before you began this course thinking your life was purposeless and limited and helpless and hopeless, many consumers, particularly in your country, many business owners, independent ones, entrepreneurs in your country, don't think they have a lot of options, don't think they have a lot of possibilities, don't think they have a lot of alternatives that they can do to be more successful, to be more profitable, to be happier. So you have a world of limitless possibilities to choose from, but the key to it all is as an entrepreneur, your job is to add more value to whatever area you decide to focus on, and you have infinite areas, we'll go through them through these modules, but it's to be able to go into an area with your business and add value, bring benefit, make people better off because your business or your company or your product is in it. Also, and I think this is something very powerful, just like you as a young adult may feel or may have felt, I hope you don't now because I'm going to be your ally, I'm going to be your advocate, I'm going to be your champion, I'm going to be your supporter throughout this process, and I'm the one who believes in you more than anyone, anyone, because you can do it. But just like you felt helpless and hopeless, a lot of other people that work 
for other companies feel helpless and hopeless and purposeless too. So as an entrepreneur, before you even get started, you have to make some decisions because you do have choices. Many business owners in Japan, the choice that they make is to allow people to continue working in a very unsatisfying and a controlled environment. I'm not passing judgment. I'm only saying that the entrepreneur you want to be is going to be passionate, purposeful, possibility-oriented, and the people you, you bring into your business, whether they're young or old, whether they're untrained or specialized, your commitment is going to be to continually grow and develop them and give them an environment where they are excited, where they are contributing as well. Because when you do that, passion, excitement, commitment is, is operating and driving great success. So you want to be a, a value creator. You want to basically grow and develop other people. You want to be able to add meaningful value by solving problems or creating opportunities for the people that your product, service, or business contributes to. You want also to be a multiplier and not a diminisher. Very important. What is a multiplier? A multiplier is someone in business, an entrepreneur, who through what they do and how they do it, makes everything better. They make their clients feel better. Their product or service makes their clients' life better. They bring a higher state of um, qualitativeness to the product, service, or industry they operate in. They have a greater respect for their employees, and also for their clients. They grow their industry by being more innovative and by continually improving the service. They respect and appreciate their clients, their vendors. They are starting every day with a passionate focus on how many people they'll be able to add value to each and every day in as many ways as possible. A multiplier tries to multiply the impact their company, their product, and their service makes in the market. They never look at it as a commodity. They are not competing because everyone else is really operating with a totally flawed mindset. Most everybody else in whatever business you decide to go into or whatever field you decide to go into or whatever product or service you decide to go into will be operating as if they are a shoe store or if they are a uh, restaurant or if they are a IT consultant. You will go into it with the mindset that you are a creator of value for others. You are a transformer of a more productive and rewarding outcome, that you are adding meaningful and more significant value through your company, product, or service than anyone else, and you will care more about the people you serve, including the, the employees who serve you and who you serve, and you will all come across to your market so powerfully different, so positively significant that your business will go, woo, not instantly, but over a very rapid period of time. Number three, as an entrepreneur, you take the negatives in any situation and you turn them into positives. I have a philosophy, and it, I, I, I've, uh, I use a lot of metaphors, a lot of similes, a lot of examples, because they make it easier for you to see the possibilities. So in the martial arts field, 
there is a form of martial arts called Aikido. Basically, Aikido is a martial arts that uses the power and the force of the enemy back against the enemy to the Aikido master's advantage. So your enemy becomes your greatest weapon of success. In business, as a J. Abraham trained preeminent entrepreneur, you are going to use whatever the problems are, whatever the negatives are, whatever the weaknesses are, and instead of using them as, instead of seeing them as a negative or a detriment, you are going to see them as the greatest opportunity. You are going to learn, not just magical or mystical, but through processes. I will take you through throughout the modules in this program. You're going to see how to turn any negative into a positive. For example, we will show you how having no, no resources, no money, uh, is not a negative. It can be a great advantage because you can find other companies who have an overabundance of resources they are not fully using and arrange ways to partner with them. We will show you how lack of... Uh, expertise or talent is not a problem because you can joint venture with people who possess talent. We will show you how you can penetrate any and as many industries in as many different product or service categories as you want by merely finding and making uh, associations, alliances, and partnerships with other people who already own the trust and access to the market you want to sell to, market to, penetrate. We will show you how to ethically leverage up, meaning harness over a hundred different elements of other companies' resources. We will show you that in any situation, what you think is your problem is really the opportunity to fill a problem for someone bigger. All you have to do is figure out who they are and what, what, your, what your advantage is to them and people will eagerly do business with you, for you, partner with you, support you, finance you. We're going to teach you all of the different amazing choices you have. Let me sh share a few right now. Just a few. First thing is you can start a business from scratch with no money at all and build it on a skill set that you have that other people don't that you can offer full-time or part-time, whether it's you're great at organizing uh, time, whether it's you're great at uh, doing exercise, whether you're great at uh, teaching computer, you can build a starting business that way. You can work for a company that has only one facility in one area and you can make a partnership to take that facility and have them finance you opening another one or at least licensing their business if it's successful and doing it in another city in Japan. You can get the rights to create new profit centers or service models or products and under the brand of other existing companies. You can partner with media, online, offline, magazines, newspapers, websites, uh, uh, social communities to create products or services. You can create service companies that do not have any, any uh, employees or, or uh, equipment and joint venture with service companies that have employees and equipment but are not utilizing them fully and have them provide the fulfillment, but you sell it under your company name. 
You can acquire rights to tangible items or intangible items. For example, you can get the rights to a product that is very popular in one industry but not even used in another industry and you can get the exclusive rights to sell it in an industry where it doesn't exist. You can get the rights to help grow businesses' profits or save businesses' money, and you don't have to even know how to grow businesses' profits or save them money. All you have to do is find other people who know how to do that and partner with them, bring them in to do it, and you can create half of the profit for yourself. I have, and I'm not going to teach it to you in this module, but I have 10 profit pathways that you can use to create for yourself perpetual, ongoing, recurring, passive income, meaning you don't even have to do more than set it up, negotiate the deal, and you keep getting income streams coming to you for long periods of time, sometimes for life. You can... Find a successful business outside of Japan and get the rights for no capital outlay to license, to franchise, to partner with other successful companies in Japan. You can find successful companies in Japan that have a model that would be very successful in other countries, but they've never taken it there and you can license it. You can find prominent people. They can be celebrities. They can be business people. They can be athletes. And you can arrange to represent them and go to companies and make them the, uh, that company's endorser and charge a fee plus a percentage of the improved sales that that endorsement creates. And you can take a permanent piece of that. You can go to businesses and purchase them without any initial capital by paying the owner out of the future earnings and the growth you create and the extra profit you generate. And I will teach you in one of the, module, one of the modules exactly how to do that. You can, this is so much fun, you can um, go and buy the rights to a kind of a business outside of Japan, bring it to Japan, and partner with a large facility. For example, here in the United States, there's a man that got the rights to a certain kind of a fast food restaurant, and then he went to large gas stations on the highways and he relicensed that them the right to put those restaurants inside their gas stations. He got a fee, but he got a percentage of the license that he shared with the company in Canada. There are people that just tie up or secure the rights to something and then sell those rights to someone else. Now, let me give you a few real examples, and I'm just introducing you. We're going to go through specific modules over time that help you really get clear on this. But number one, great story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand your mind with a bunch of stories. So I started out not having any education, not having any ability, but I was able to find people that had products that they had oversupplies of. They had already paid for the products. They weren't selling. They didn't have a lot of salespeople. The products were not in a lot of stores or uh, uh, appropriate locations. They were sitting in warehouses gathering dust. I made an arrangement to get control of those products and take them to retail stores, take them to restaurants, take them to hair salons, take them to uh, uh, health clubs and place them in their facilities on an arrangement where nobody paid for the products until they had sold. And when they paid, they got to keep a share 
I got to keep a share, and the other company who had the product in their warehouse got to keep a share. I did this about 10 different times. The first time I did it, I had no money, no skill, I had no, no capital to pay for the product, but I was able to get control of $500,000 worth of product in one category. I was able to set up arrangements with 40 stores who sold it for me. And I started making 4,000 US dollars a week, every week, without any investment starting three weeks later. I did it again with a totally different product that I put in drugstores all over my city. And I started making $4,000 every two weeks from that one. I did it with another product that I was able to take to media and I made $50,000 a month doing that. And I'm gonna teach you all the ways I did it. I was able to get the rights one time to a very large publishing company's subscriber list. And because you have a privacy laws, don't misunderstand, they did not give me the list. I created a new profit center that sold complementary products and services that were naturally appealing to the same uh, interest of the people who were subscribing to their publications. I got to use their name. I got to advertise it through their magazines, through their newsletters, through their e-zines, through their website. And I made the first year $8 million. $8 million and I had no money, no capital, but I was able to use their distribution. But I added value to them because they were not doing this and I was able to do it for them. Let me tell you some other stories. A very good friend of mine got started in the flea market business. And the flea market business is a form of a bazaar where you get a very large open space, and on weekends, these spaces have all these uh, vendors that are selling products, food, crafts, etc. You have to have a location that's big enough that you can sell 100 or 200 booths. A friend of mine found one of the largest sports arenas in Los Angeles that was only used through the football season. Nobody used it three quarters of the rest of the, the year. It, it was vacant, but it had parking for 80,000 people. It had land that could accommodate probably 100,000 people. And he got the rights to use it as a flea market, a bazaar, for no money down, but for paying the owner of the sports arena a share of the revenue. Once he had that agreement, he went to a professional company that was the national leader in doing flea markets and doing bazaars. They knew how to set them up. They already had hundreds of vendors. They just didn't have good locations in Los Angeles. He had tied up and had a long-term contract with one of the prime and most desirable locations in all of Los Angeles. He didn't know anything about being a flea market operator. He didn't know anything about selling booths. He knew nothing about anything, getting regulations, but he had control of the location. So he went to the big company that was the largest in the nation and he made a deal where they agreed to run the bazaars and pay him a percentage that was double the amount he paid to the landowner. He made millions of dollars just by being smart enough to tie up the land. There's another company, very smart. They go around and they find uh, designers or athletes who used to be very, very, very popular, but are not as popular anymore, but still have a respectful following. 
they get the rights to their name and then they license those rights to other companies for products, for services, and they get a royalty and they split that royalty with the celebrity or with the designer. I had another friend, and this was brilliant. He would go to companies that did everything from sheets and pillowcases to containers that you would have in your kitchen for holding rice or flour to uh, uh, plates and uh, cups. And he would offer to create designs for those companies. And his proposal was test the designs I create for you against the, the products you have with no designs. If the ones with designs sell a lot more, give me 5% of the sales. And he was very good at creating designs that made a bland white plate now a very beautifully designed plate or a white sheet now a beautifully designed sheet and sometimes it would double the sales and he would make millions of dollars another man wanted wanted to drive Porsche automobiles all his life but he could never afford one he found out a Porsche auto dealer was for sale in a smaller city but he couldn't afford the $1 million down payment. Instead of seeing that as a problem, he realized there was another opportunity. In the United States, car dealers can allow people to drive what they call demonstrators, meaning you can take a brand new car and for three months maximum, somebody can drive it and it's still considered a new car. It uses special plates and it's not registered as sold and it goes back to the dealership. This young man who wanted to buy a dealership did not have the $1 million down payment, but he knew there must be a lot of other sports, excuse me, Porsche sports car enthusiasts who really wanted to drive Porsches and didn't have the money to keep buying new ones. So he ran an ad in the paper. The ad said, I can give you a brand new Porsche to drive every year for the rest of your life. And instead of spending $100,000 every year for a new one, pay one time $75,000 and you'll never pay another penny again. And he got 200 people to respond. And what he did, he said, if you give me the $75,000, I will use your money together to buy a Porsche dealership. As a Porsche dealer, I can allow you to drive a demo for three months every year for free. You take, you, I'll take it back and give you another one and we'll keep doing that. He used that simple philosophy, hopefully it makes sense, and he raised $3 million, bought the dealership, got a million and a half dollars extra as a bonus, never had to pay a penny in, in um, interest to the banks because it wasn't a loan, never had to pay a penny to any partners because it wasn't a partnership. They just got to use a Porsche every year. I had another friend, and this was incredible. They, in fact, this is a great story. In the United States, one of the most successful cruise lines Boat Cruises is called Carnival Cruise. When Carnival Cruise first started out, they didn't have any money. The owner was able to get control on a, on a lease. He didn't have to pay any money of an old, uh, ugly cruise ship that had been uh, in bad repair. It still worked, but it looked ugly. The owner didn't have a lot of money. He could only afford to paint one side of the cruise ship which meant whenever he came in to a port, he had to come in on the pretty side because the other side was ugly and rusted. It had 400 rooms, but he rarely sold more than 100, meaning he had 300 rooms that were unsold every time he went out on a cruise. His rate at the time was $1,000 a cruise for a room. That meant every time he went out every week on a cruise, 
300 rooms worth $1,000 a piece were unused. That also meant that he had $300,000 a week in potential buying power he was not using. He got the idea of trading, of exchanging the unused 300 rooms every week to magazines and newspapers and television stations and websites for advertising. He would get the equivalent. If 10 rooms would uh, sell for $10,000, he would trade it for $10,000 worth of advertising. He ended up getting tens of millions of dollars of advertising free in his first year. He was able to fill the boat with paying clients. He was able to buy new boats and from that strategy, he built a multi-billion dollar company, a multi-billion dollar company. I have helped people buy their employer without putting up a dime. I have helped people buy two or three small businesses in the same field and then put them together where you get economies of scale, meaning each business had a bookkeeper or each business that was a dry cleaner had a presser and a, and a, and a uh, delivery. But if you put three together, you only need one and you can eliminate three or four of the jobs and end up literally with a whole bigger amount of profit. I have helped people get the rights, like in the United States years ago, I helped a person get the rights to infomercials before they were ever offered in Australia. The people in the United States spent millions of dollars creating infomercials. They spent millions of dollars developing products and producing them, but they only ran the infomercials in the United States. My client went to those people, I guided them. They would get the rights to use their million dollar investment in an infomercial. They'd get the right to buy the product from the client who already had paid for them, had paid all the manufacturing, who owned them so my client could buy them one at a time for a great price. My client made $25 million in the first year. Now, the stories I'm going to tell, the examples I'm going to give, the different uh, pathways I'm going to share in the new models and modules we're going to go through will teach you not just ways to make a lot of money, but ways to start out and build in a very safe, progressive way. The example I give, if you know anything about uh, ships, you'll know what locks are. Panama Canal, the Suez Canal, they have locks. And that means that what ships trying to come from one ocean to another, it can't just go like that. It has to go through a series of steps to get there. We will work out together over the next few months the best strategy for you to begin with to become a successful entrepreneur, a long-term goal of where you can take your entrepreneurial career, meaning you might start slow. One of the biggest, wealthiest landowners real estate barons in the United States started out owning a little restaurant. A man who died just yesterday was the largest and the biggest conglomerate owner in the media. He owned NBC, he owned cable companies, and he started out with a teeny tiny manufacturing company that made men's pants. So the point is, I will not allow you ever again to limit your sense of what is possible over your lifetime as an entrepreneur. I will also teach you how to think very strategically, meaning long-term, but I will teach you how to think very progressively, meaning many people think there's no way I can be a millionaire, there's no way I can 
have a big successful business, so they give up. There are absolutely safe, absolutely success-proven ways to start with one strategy or one business or one activity and either multiply it or use it to grow and gain lots of other ones. You will learn how to accurately and effectively determine the what I call the optimal, the best, the maximum profit destiny path for you, which means each person is unique and different. You will see that you have all these options and we will evaluate together the benefits, the advantages, the disadvantages, the ease or the complexity so that together we will build you your own unique entrepreneurial business success plan. The plan will not be abstract. By the time you complete this program, you'll know exactly what you're going to do first, second, third, how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, exactly the steps you're going to use to do it, and if you have any difficulties, how to overcome them. And then you will also build a long-term life strategy that shows you how to take whatever successes you start with and not be satisfied there, but keep taking them higher and higher and higher. And we will use as examples real-life people that I have known. I'm going to teach you how to become a masterful marketer because marketing is the key to really getting people to want to do business with you and not your competitor, getting people to see the value you create. We will teach you how to be a masterful strategist, which means you'll be able to see how to take fullest advantage of opportunities in markets, of gaps in ways none of the other people do it. We will teach you how to be a very effective negotiator because negotiating is how you gain control of situations. We will teach you how to communicate your value in such a powerful way that other companies, other organizations, other key influencers, the media will all want to do business with you without you having to come up with any capital. We'll teach you to add profit centers to other businesses. We will teach you how to find the exact business today that will get you started and get you financially stable. Then we will teach you how to use that business to springboard you to far greater financial success and security. Then we will teach you how to grow your business by developing talent. We will teach you by modeling, by um, applying the same methods, the same techniques, the same strategic um, game plans that many of the thousands of other successful entrepreneurs I have counseled or been counseled by used to grow their success. So for today and for this segment, the most important lesson I need to teach you is that you have within you greatness. It's a greatness that has always existed but probably never been allowed to develop. There are many reasons why. The first reason is probably that no one in your life, be it parents, employer, uh, uh, professors at school, teachers, uh, ministers or priests, no one ever knew how to show you what greatness was should look like. And by that I mean there's two ways greatness should be seen. One is how differently you think in your mind, how differently you conduct yourself to others, 
how differently you look at situations. The other is how more powerfully you communicate and you connect in all of your activities or dealings. By the way, you have the ability immediately to achieve greatness in many elements of your life. First, you can start building your greatness and, and multiplying it as an entrepreneur. But perhaps before that, you want to develop your greatness as a human being so you can have greater character, greater passion, greater compassion, greater appreciation of others and of yourself. You might want to grow your uh, greatness as a husband, wife, if you're married, fiance, if you're engaged, boyfriend, girlfriend, if you've got a boyfriend or girlfriend, or just friend. You have to grow your greatness as a value contributor because that is going to define your ultimate success by seeing life in a different way than anyone else. Most people, when they try to plug into their greatness, fail because they don't understand two things. One, where they are right now on the scale. If this is greatness as an entrepreneur and you're here, you can't be depressed. You have to be excited because you have all this more growth to achieve. And with each level of growth, you have an exponential level of reward and success. But you have to figure out where you are in every category. If it's entrepreneurial greatness you're after, if you're here and you have to go here, you can't do it in one step. It's it, You'll fail. It's like saying, I want to be a pole vaulter and the first time I do it, I want to pole vault 25 feet. You have to figure out a, a, a safe series of progressions so that every day you're getting closer and closer, but you are growing every day. So in order to do that, you have to first learn the steps that need to be taken to take you from wherever you are right now to wherever you want to be. And it's not pole vaulting. It's not catapulting. It's simple, safe steps that are higher in their success probability than they are in their failures. So everything I do for you, everything we talk about is going to be based on me putting greater advantage and greater success probability on you and on your side of doing things and less failure so that you are motivated to have wins, successes, positive experiences that fuel and drive you to very, very excited and enthusiastic going forward. So first thing is we got to plug into your greatness. Second thing, we have to figure out what you need to do to change how you look at life and how you communicate and how people see you. Next, we've got to figure out where the gap is and then the pathways to get to that gap. And then you have to build a plan to progress on that pathway. And then you have to start and commit to doing it in, an, in a systematic, a disciplined, a regular basis. Now, a word of warning, and it's not a negative, it's a... Um, it's a joyous problem you will have to, to accept. If any of you can remember back when you were a little child, which you probably can't, your parents had to teach you to walk. They had to teach you to talk. They had to teach you to eat. They had to teach you to use the bathroom. You got taught how to ride a bicycle. When you first started, you were not very good. Your first step, you probably fell over. Your first time trying to eat, you probably put the spoon of oatmeal 
or rice in your eye. The first time you tried to talk, it might have sounded the first time you tried to go to the bathroom probably was uh, very unsuccessful. Well, the first time you will try to apply or uh, implement or execute any and all of the things I teach you, you probably won't be great at it. It doesn't mean it won't allow you to reach your greatness. It means that you probably will have to accept that we have to build your comfort, your skill, and your proficiency. That's not a problem because I will engineer, I have engineered into all the exercises and all the instruction that I give you safe, easy ways to build your ability to develop your skill and to achieve success while first accepting some less than successful starting points. Next point, we're going to teach you to tap into your greatness. Got to figure out where you are. Got to figure out where on the continuum you need to be, the strategy to get there. We have to give you the motivation and the confidence to feel great about starting and continuing down that success path to greatness. Then when you start and it doesn't necessarily work perfectly, you have to know that I will always be here to support you, to re-encourage you, to redirect you, and to believe in you until you get to a successful outcome. When you get there, the key is to have people constantly believe in you. So as one of the last parts of this program, we're going to teach you how to create for yourself a mastermind alliance, a group of other business owners, other um, passionate entrepreneurs, other professionals, other people who will believe in you and who will meet with you regularly to guide you, to encourage you, to give you their perspectives, to make your journey more successful, more more satisfying and faster, safer, and more rewarding. There's a lot more I can say, but I don't want to overwhelm you. In the next modules, we will start getting into more uh, concrete and specific areas and elements. But the most important conclusion today is you can absolutely, positively, and unequivocally become a successful entrepreneur. You have every right, you have the ability, you have someone here who has helped more people do it worldwide, and you have me committed to you. I will not allow you to limit or restrict or uh, constrain your deservedness to have a wonderful life. I will not allow you to ever feel helpless or hopeless or purposeless again. And I will not allow you to achieve less than your ability, your, your mental capacity, and your natural greatness, desires, and deserts. Lastly, I ask only two things from you. Trust me in my intention and commit yourself to me because I will never let you down. I will never ask you to do something that I think you are incapable of. I will liberate, I will emancipate from within you talents, abilities, creativity, and opportunities you never dreamed possible. And all you have to do is trust me. And together, over the course of this program, you will be transformed into an entrepreneur. And that transformation will redefine, will reinvigorate, 
will redirect the entire and the wonderful future of your life. It's an absolute certainty as long as you do your part. I can't do it for you. Success is really a function of whether you execute, whether you implement, whether you believe. But you can believe one thing. I will never tell you anything that hasn't been done, isn't achievable, isn't true. I will never give you strategies that won't work. I will never ask you to do more than you're capable of. But I will ask you to do more than you've allowed yourself to do because you are capable of so much more for yourself and for others. And I'll be very proud to call you an entrepreneur at the conclusion of this program. Thank you.